extremely fast action and a lot of blurring going on, uh, it's going to just dramatically increase the impact. I mean, I did scientific lab tests years ago when I was doing show scan, hooking people up to all kinds of sensors and finding out that you could dramatically increase human stimulation and excitement just by increasing the frame rate. If you have a situation occurring in a film where that high frame rate looks really odd or it looks too much like television or it looks invasive or it looks inappropriate, then don't do it. I mean, you don't have to do a, a, a one-size-fits-all in this world. Uh, on the other hand, my personal interest is in going into a new kind of hyper-cinema territory where we use high frame rates to their best advantage to create an experience that's extremely immersive because one of the things that's going on in our industry right now is that uh, movie attendance in theaters is at a 16-year low. People, in any studio makes 75% of their money from foreign markets and they also make 75% of their money in digital distribution of their product. The amount, the percentage of revenues that come from theatrical exhibition is in decline. It's just held, it's, it's held steady a little bit by increasing ticket prices by virtue of things like 3D and special things. I think that the movie going experience has to be dramatically improved with better screens, brighter screens, more showmanship, fewer trailers, no ads, and a spectacle that you can't get on television. <laughs> I don't want to address the specific feedback to Jim's footage, but overall, you know, 10 years ago, people felt that you could not shoot something digitally and make it look good in a cinema. That's what many cinematographers thought. Right. The last three Oscar-winning movies were all shot digitally. So there are creative choices that can be applied to make it look the way you want it to creatively look. And, and I don't think that... Uh, high frame rate should be looked at it in something that's going to just be for action films or something like that. You know, I've got I've got used to the high speed stuff and seeing it at home. You know, you look at Citizen Kane, you look at The Shining, you look at Laurel and Hardy, you look at anything that you love. Once you get past that, that oh my God, it looks like TV, you know, other stuff in TV, it doesn't because you've still got great actors, great cinematography and all that. The only thing different is the frame rate. The experience on those movies is incredibly because you're watching just actors living an experience. I mean, look at The Godfather with it on. It's like seeing a different movie in a totally positive way. You know, you're with those guys in the horrendous situations. I really, you know, recommend people try it. Yeah, I think that if you, if you do personally experience some kind of discomfort when you see something at 60 or even 48, uh, that goes away because after you've seen it for a while and you go back to 24, you say, how could I possibly have watched that for so long? It's over. I mean, that, but it's, I mean, it's not over in the sense that 24 frames is a really great art form. It's beautiful. It creates a veil of two-dimensionality that's absolutely appropriate for most films. And I think it's going to stay with us. It's not under threat. Anybody who wants to make a film can make it a 24, 48, 60, 3D, 2D, black and white, small screen, big screen, any aspect ratio. So it's a creative choice. And there's appropriate uses of creative choices. I just, I'm resistant to the idea of using these things as a gimmick to get more money in the box office when you apply 3D to a movie that was never even thought about to be in 3D. That can be completely inappropriate. And that goes for frame rates and everything else. <laughs>